I folks, I recently found on the street next to a garbage bin throw away a very huge television. It's a very old one, he used a very old technology which is a retro projected image on the television. Inside the television is mounted a cinema projector and this projector will create the image on the screen. It's something very interesting and I'm pretty sure I can make something with it and make my own lights, a professional lights to light up my video setup. So let's see, let's get started. Inside the television, I found these three projectors. I have three of them because each one of them will project a single color and all three combined together will create the image on the screen. This, you probably recognize this component here in the back, is a very old technology, it's a CRT monitor and I probably will recycle it for a future project. The lens here in front is so big, it's huge, it's almost big like my hand, which is a great thing for projectors because the bigger the lens it is, the more light can pass through it, it will not block light. And it's a great thing because I want my lens, my light for light video, for lighting my videos to be very bright. Here there's something very strange, it looks like a rubber nipple and I can already feel with my fingers inside that there is some liquid. I think this, screw here is like a cap that keeps all this liquid inside so remove the screw with a screwdriver take a glass bottle a very clean one and drop away all this liquid inside the bottle i'm not really sure about what kind of liquid is this probably is like oil or mineral oil or maybe glycerin or paraffin or water i'm not really sure about the um, also the reason why they put this kind of liquid inside a projector so i'm very very curious to know so if you have any idea if you have any suggestion please let me know here in the comments below i probably have two ideas about uh, the reason why they put liquid inside a projector and i will tell you about them at the end of this video at this point, let's take a flat screwdriver, put some lever force on the CRT monitor so that I can remove it. This was held in place by this black glue that works like a rubber gasket that seal everything together. Now, you see that the lens here is very interesting. It's so weird. It's like a concave lens and right now it doesn't have any kind, any, any effect. It's not a fisheye lens. It's not even a macro lens. So let's take some soap, water soap and tissue to remove and clean very carefully all the oil that was on the surface of the projector. I want it to be so clean because I want to glue in place a very thick piece of glass. In fact, this will be, will replace the CRT monitor that was here in, in position. So I cut it at the right dimension and to glue it in place I can just use some normal silicone just make sure to make a very straight line without uh, air leaks so we don't have water leaks later on. So let the silicone dry for about 24 hours and now let's take an LED chip. This is a 50 watt LED chip so it's very powerful and this got, gets very hot. I absolutely need to have an heat sink so this is aluminum heat sink from a computer. To transfer the heat from aluminum to the LED chip I will use some heat sink compound and after installing the heat sink on some black plastic base I can fix in place the LED chip that goes here in the middle and this is the heat sink compound I was talking about to you earlier. So just put a very little amount, uh, just, just don't put too much otherwise it will not work. This is like grease and helps to transfer the heat from the LED to the aluminum base. Now with my drill press I can make four holes in the four corners of the LED and to fix in place the LED chip on the, the base of aluminum probably you very often seen using screws but I really prefer to use rivets to do this I prefer rivets because are much quicker to install um, and also because once you are applying the rivets you are also applying a lot of force on the base and all the heat sink compound that was in excess is squished outside 
so I really prefer to do this. In any case, I think like this is so cheap and if the LED burns, I can just replace everything, which is so easy. So two copper cables, quite thick, are passed through the plastic base, remove the copper from inside and at this point I can solder some soldering in on the top and I have two cables that has to be connected on the LED chip. It's very easy, on the LED chip is written which one is positive, which lead is positive and which is negative. So don't worry in any case if you mess up the things, you will not burn the LED, you will not broke, break anything. The only result is that the LED will not turn on. So let's take the liquid I took away earlier with a huge syringe, I can put it again inside. And now you can really see that the lens change effect in a very interesting way. Once the uh, liquid goes inside, you can really see that now the lens works like a fisheye lens. You can see through it all the room and it's, I think it's a great thing because if it works like a fisheye, we also expand the light outside. I shake uh, all the projectors to remove all the air bubbles, put again the screw in place and remove the little plastic that cover the LED to protect it. At this point I can put the black plastic base on top of the projector and to keep it in place I use two aluminium brackets to do this. In this case I just cut them away from a old computer and four bolts are installed on the four corners. I will also use these two very thick metal parts on the side of the projector to install a metal bracket. This metal bracket uh, is very easy to make, I just weld in place five pieces of metal and cut them at the right dimension of course and two bolts and two knobs are placed on top. I can just secure them very strongly and this doesn't shake which means it's a very secure fix and I'm pretty sure that with a bracket like this I can uh, direct the light in the exact spot on the right subject I really need. To power on the LED, I need to have a driver. This driver steps down 220 volts into 32, 32 volts. This is very important to make the life of the LED longer. Just choose the right driver. I decided to make my own projectors, even if I already own these two LED panels. These are very diffuse light for my videos, but I really need to have some more focused light, not really to point it on the subject, but just to create a very nice effect on the background. Like in this case, it looks like a, a movie scene or something like this, but I can, I can play much more with these lights. The first thing I need to make are some things like this, something to close the light and play more with it. And it's not difficult to make it. I will maybe use some cardboard or aluminum plates to do this and this will help me to close more the um, more focus the light like uh, to cut the, the scene with light but you will see this maybe later on in my future projects and at this point I'm very happy on the result you cannot even understand how happy I am am I 
I, I've seen lights like this, like a couple years ago when I went to Jaco's studio, Jaco whatever studio, and he owns lights like this. He bought them, are a little bit smaller than mine, and you can really make very, very nice effects. Like this one, you can clearly see the shadow around my head, and this is used to bring the subject more in front and just take it away from the background. I folks, I recently found on the street next to a garbage bin, throw away a very huge television. It's a very old one, it uses a very old technology, which is a retro projected image on the television. Inside the television is mounted a cinema projector and this projector will create the image on the screen. It's something very interesting and I'm pretty sure I can make something with it and make my own lights, professional lights to light up my video setup. So let's see, let's get started. So I really love the, the result. I hope you enjoyed the project and you took some inspiration. You never know, maybe one day you will find an old cinema projector or something like this and you know how to use it. So at this point I leave you with my two projects and because we are talking about lenses and LEDs, check this out. I'm talk I also made, I turned a reflex camera into a very powerful LED torch, which is amazing. So check it out. See you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial. Ciao ciao!